are directed energy weapons real? Without doubt. Have directed energy weapons been used against U.S. government personnel? Absolutely. These are weapons of maximum disruption. Mike, you did counterintelligence work for the U.S. government. You dealt with highly classified information. We walked in on an operation that the hostile country was doing. So you were attacked by a hostile intelligence service. Right. It fundamentally disrupts the brain network. Yes, ma'am. And can cause brain cell death. Yes, ma'am. We had applied for workers' compensation. The agencies involved did everything they could to not approve my application. You were denied three times for workman's comp. Right. All these people being injured and you're just saying, no, it didn't really happen. I have a letter here from one of the country's leading Parkinson's experts. I can state that Mr. Beck has a much more clearly documented exposure to a microwave weapon than those patients described in either the literature or the media. Mr. Beck clearly merits the recognition that his Parkinson's disease and its associated symptoms are due to his government service. Mike, do you think it's a government cover-up? Yes. Based on your first-hand research, are directed energy weapons real? Without doubt. Have directed energy weapons been used against U.S. government personnel? Absolutely. Have directed energy weapons been used at targets overseas? Yes, ma'am. Are reports of directed energy weapon attacks inside the U.S. credible? Absolutely. A longtime advisor to the U.S. military, James Giordano is the director of the Center for Disruptive Technology and Future Warfare at the National Defense University. Giordano shared his expertise with the caveat he does not speak for the U.S. government. These are weapons of maximum disruption. It allows you to get in fast, hit hard, get out. And then, and only then, will the effects begin to be known. In 2016, when almost two dozen government employees became ill in Cuba at the U.S. Embassy, Giordano was brought in as a lead consulting neuroscientist. The U.S. diplomat's debilitating brain injuries became known as Havana syndrome, or anomalous health incidents. How many types of directed energy weapons exist that have been used against U.S. government personnel? To my experience and from my analysis, essentially three. So we're looking at two forms of sonic weapon. They both use sound and the expansions and contractions of a sound wave as the mechanism by which it's going to disrupt function and structure of various tissues, but they do so differently. And the third was something that was really something of a revelation. And this is the use of scalable and directable microwaves. With nearly 2,000 reported attacks in more than a dozen countries, our team hit the road to investigate validated Havana syndrome cases. We traveled to Maryland and this assisted living facility to visit retired counterintelligence officer Mike Beck. Medical records we exclusively obtained link a microwave weapon to Beck's clearly documented brain injury. Beck moved here last August after his condition worsened and his wife of 40 years could no longer care for him at home. It's devastating. Um, we, had a, we had a bucket list for when we retired and um, being together was on it, not living apart. Mike, was it a hard decision for you to leave your family home and move into assisted living at, what, 63? It was hard. It was depressing. But I understood the situation I was in. Help people understand what they're seeing and, and hearing from your husband. So it has been a slow deterioration over time. And um, he's gradually losing his train of thought. He forgets what the next word is, so he'll get stuck. And he just, he'll stop because he, his brain isn't processing fast enough. An incredibly sharp and capable counterintelligence officer, much of Beck's 33 years of government service remain classified. Beck's progressive brain injury has left him physically and mentally debilitated. We took multiple breaks during our interview. Mike, you did counterintelligence work for the U.S. government. 
you dealt with highly classified information above top secret special access programs. Does your government intelligence work remain highly classified to this day? Yes. Yes, it, it is. A year after this home video was shot of his daughter's christening in 1995, Beck describes a directed energy weapon attack that hit him and his partner while on assignment for the U.S. government. The location remains secret. We traveled to a hostile country and we found some, some pieces of gear that we only heard about. We walked in on an operation that the hostile country was doing. So you were attacked by a hostile intelligence service right. after you made a major find about their capabilities that they were going to use against the United States. Right. This 2014 national security memo linked the hostile country where Beck says he was attacked to a high-powered microwave system weapon. But the Becks are still fighting for recognition. If if this memo is not enough evidence that your husband was hit by a directed energy weapon, what else does the U.S. government need? They basically wanted the hostile country to say, yes, we hit Mike Beck on this date, this time, in this place. Why do you think the U.S. government is setting the bar so high? I, I think they just wanted to protect their reputation instead of protecting their employees. Giordano showed us how brain injuries like Beck's can happen. Hollow spaces in the skull, the mouth, nose, ears, and eye sockets can become echo chambers, funneling energy waves into the brain with catastrophic consequences. I think the easiest way uh, for a layperson to understand what, what particularly rapidly pulsed microwaves could do is to think about something like Wi-Fi connections in a cellular phone. So if you were to take your phone and put it in the microwave oven for a second, or two seconds. You would take the phone out and structurally it would look fine. It would seem that it would be working just fine for you on some levels, but the actual sophistication of that phone would have been changed as a consequence of the microwave damage. And not only will it change then, but that change is durable and characteristically progressive. That's what a directed energy weapon attack does. Yes, ma'am. It fundamentally disrupts the brain network. Yes, ma'am and can cause brain cell death. Yes, ma'am. It can cause both brain cell death and change in the functional ability of various cells and nodes in the brain to be able to maintain the networks that are so vital to our thought, our emotions, and our behaviors. When a directed energy weapon attack happens, is that the end of the damage? The, the problem with directed energy attacks, like many things that can happen to the brain, is that the initial insult at the injury itself is nothing more than the first snowball that then leads to the avalanche. The injury to the brain impairs the brain's ability to not only function at the time of the injury and thereafter, but to compensate effectively. So then you begin to see a cascade of effects. Who or what is responsible? This becomes difficult. But I think what's important to note is who has developed these technologies and who may be using them in a whole set of practices. Here we encounter, if you will, the big three the United States and some of its international economic and technological and military allies, our trans-Pacific peer competitor, China, who has developed these types of technologies for a variety of uses, and certainly our transatlantic peer competitor, Russia. These British medical records show in 2006, Beck was diagnosed with Parkinsonism. That's an umbrella term that refers to brain conditions that cause slowed movement and stiffness. What made Mike's Parkinson's case stand out? Well, it's very unusual because he was a young onset. He was only 45. It's usually 70s, 60s, late 60s to be diagnosed. Did he have any of the typical signs of Parkinson's? No. Mm -mm. The, his first sign that I noticed was his anxiety. He never had the tremor. He still doesn't have a tremor. So you've had a Parkinson's diagnosis and then more recently a diagnosis of of dementia. Yeah. Is that a, a se secondary consequence of the Parkinson's? Yes. Are you frustrated? Are you looking for the words? Yes, it's very frustrating. I always wanted to have my A game on for work assignments. Until I got hurt, I had a lot of success in the workplace. The one thing I can say about work is 
I love my job. I can see a lot of sadness in your eyes. It was a great career. I was blessed to have such a good job. Work with good people. Cases like Beck's impact diplomats, military operatives, law enforcement professionals, and America's spies. I was an employee of the Central Intelligence Agency for 19 years. In December, a CIA whistleblower, we agreed to call Alice to protect her identity, came forward for the first time. Alice described the fallout of a directed energy weapon attack targeting her in Africa. And we're basically like ticking time bombs, Catherine. You know, I've already started having to go to funerals. I have friends in nursing homes. I have friends with dementia and Parkinson's. In some ways, you know, people have a heart attack. And if you don't die of it, we know how to fix a heart attack. We don't know how to fix this. Like the CIA whistleblower, the Labor Department acknowledges Beck's traumatic brain injury is the result of his government service. In Beck's case, the Labor Department only acknowledged his Parkinson's diagnosis after a high-profile intervention. I have a letter here from one of the country's leading Parkinson's experts. He writes, Although I have limited expertise in so-called Havana syndrome, I can state that Mr. Beck has a much more clearly documented exposure to a microwave weapon as well as a much more clearly documented brain injury than those patients described in either the literature or the media. Mr. Beck clearly merits the recognition that his Parkinson's disease and its associated symptoms are due to his government service. We had applied for workers' compensation and the agencies involved did everything they could to not approve my application. You were denied three times for workman's comp. Right. Did you finally get workman's comp? The uh, benefit we received was um, they will have, they will pay for Mike's assisted living. You shared one of the bills for the assisted living uh, with our team. And it says um, there's a balance due of over $25,000. Is the government paying Mike's assisted living on time? No. No? No. How many months behind is the U.S. government on its payments for Mike's assisted living? Three months behind. Does that just create more anxiety? It does. It's scary. I mean, I don't know how long, you know, when am I going to get the call that says you're going to have to pay this because we still haven't gotten a check? And it'd be devastating because, you know, we're not living on a whole ton of money. I have this intelligence community assessment from January. It was released by the Biden administration. It says most of the intelligence community continues to assess that it's very unlikely a foreign adversary is responsible for the events reported as Havana syndrome or anomalous health incidents. It's ridiculous. I mean, all these people being injured and you're just saying, no, it didn't really happen. I mean, how do you make this up? Mike, do you think it's a government cover-up? Yes. Is the U.S. government trying to limit the identification of cases and compensation? That sounds reasonable. Is that what you think? I think it's problematic that there's evidence that the U.S. government has re regarding the availability and use of the weapons. And that hasn't been brought to light. Were you left behind by the U.S. government? Most definitely. There's a narrative that directed energy weapon attacks didn't really begin until 2016. Is that a false narrative? It is. It is. I think part of the problem is that the cases prior to then were far more insular cases. And they occurred in particular circumstances that did not warrant broad public dissemination. In other words, characteristically, it was some aspect of that case that was classified. The Trump administration is more openly addressing Havana syndrome. In February, we sat down with Secretary of State Marco Rubio. But I think there are most definitely cases 
where there is no logical explanation other than the fact that some external mechanism caused them to suffer brain injuries that in many cases look like they were hit over the head with a baseball bat or, or assaulted somewhere. We can't ignore that. And in the meantime, what we have to ensure is that whether they were State Department personnel or working for some other agency, that those people are getting the treatment and the support that they need. Has there been a sea change within the U.S. government about directed energy weapon attacks? But it's been perceptible to me and for many of my colleagues that at this point there's really much more of a lean in to this, recognizing A, the reality of the actual devices, B, the reality of the individuals who suffered an injury, and C, the need to do something about it. Mike, what are you fighting for? Equity for our family. What are you asking President Trump to do? Clean up the mess that's been made with all these inaccuracies. Rita, what are you asking President Trump to do? I think he needs to show that we care about Americans first and that other countries, even if you don't name them, don't have the right to harm our, our people. And it should stop. <laughs>